recording. And we are seekers. That is why we are on Saturday's session. <clears throat> We never forget that we are not a seeker. Seeker means we are calm, relaxed, ready, and aware to explore who we are. To find what causes suffering. To know, rise from the mud of delusion. <clears throat> this is already in the, our background. And then the masters in the Eastern wisdom passes on the knowledge to the seekers. With that background, the seeker realizes one has not to do the practice, one has not to do anything. It is like the key of the car is lost somewhere in the house and I have found it. So one master says that we have to live in an extraordinary awareness to find out who we are. So how to rise into that extraordinary awareness? By concepts and principles by contemplation and reflection. Concept is just an idea, the thought, it a phrase. So when that phrase or an idea or a thought is translated, is given, translated into a thought, Man, concept, I am a man, principle. So from there, that is that is very important for us to, to, to understand this. Why? Because we extract the knowledge, and the knowledge removes the wrong notion, emotional dependence. You see the signs. <clears throat> We are not concerned about whether the sun moves around the moon or moon moves around the earth or earth. No, we are not concerned. It pertains to the objective reality, the material world. We are more concerned about whether the mind is moving around the delusion we should remove. It. That is more important. For example, now I am worthy of suffering. You don't know I have been suffering for so many years. I told you that in our country, the basic concept is first talk about how much I suffer. Do, do you see that, you know, in every, every coach, <clears throat> how much I suffer? Can you imagine? And how many possessions that I have now? No, no, my question is, are you happy? How many possessions you have, it doesn't make a difference. What do you say, you know, I, if I speak wrongly, then uh, correct it, Masrati. I have, now I have Masrati. Previously I was suffering, now I have Masrati. Is there any relationship between the two? But we are carried away. So their business is flourishing. My business is not. <laughs> but I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Do you see that? That is where once we clearly understood, then we can go deeper. Otherwise, we will continue to suffer. Can you have a Masrati and uh, are you sure that you will not suffer? You will get married and you will not suffer?
this is where the contemplation and reflection stem works. Are you getting it? Yes. Huh. Can we stop crying, worrying, and take charge of our living? That is what is all about Eastern wisdom. But so if I understand that how the delusion takes over the mind, delusion means now you already are a seeker. You know what is false, what is truth, what is untruth. Say yes, even if you don't know. <laughs> it's OK. So now see that from there, from the concept and the principles, and we contemplate, and then we become aware. So that very awareness of who we are helps us to be in the state of mindfulness 24 by 7 without any practice. So let me give you a story. Let me tell you a story and pay attention. A man jumped into the river, was swimming. A tide came, took him into the middle of the river. Are you attentive? Yes, I'm attentive. I never jumped into the river. I have to jump into the river. No, no, this is a story. To become aware, you need not to jump into the river. So tide took him into the middle, and then he has to save himself. So he found something appears like a log of wood. Uh, it, it was floating. So in extreme fear of insecurity, he caught that log of wood. It was, it started floating against the tide. Now he has another level of fear. Why it is moving against the tide? <laughs> he found that it was not a log of wood. It was a crocodile. We always try to catch the crocodile in the world outside. Did you get it? And that is why our mind is wandering. That is why we are thinking. That is why we, we claim that we are worthy of suffering. Soulmate becomes soulmate. Stephen likes this statement. He realized it was a crocodile. This is what happens in our day-to-day -day life. No, no, tell me then what happened. No, the story ends here. I have to clarify what is delusion. This is the journey of contemplation and reflection. When this mind drops with awareness that there is no security. I cannot find security in anything in the world. You think like this. OK, I do not find any security in the world, unhappiness in the world. The mind comes down. In that state, when the mind comes down, this is a rise in awareness. Then I'm living in an extraordinary awareness. All the time. You need not to do anything. I told you last time, you know, I think I discussed, I read a wonderful article. Uh, so the article says, psychology says, suggests, proves. What it proves? Those who have beard are more attractive. Can any women can any women have a luxury to grow beard? So it's a wrong concept. Do you see that? 
So wrong concepts leads me to delusion. <laughs> and when I live in delusion, so I have to suffer. <clears throat> look at the pretty women, you know, every time now they will look in, they will stand in front of the mirror, no beard. <laughs> I'm not attractive. I have to get rid of these deluded thoughts. It is only because of the delusion my mind is wandering. It is only because of the delusion or emotional dependence my mind is obsessed. My mind is crazy. I don't want to go into detail. I already sent a couple of articles you can. Sam can share. It is only because of this the modern psychology has found out more than 3,000 mental disorders. They don't go to the root cause. Come back. We are not worthy of suffering. With that background, with that background and clarity of understanding, so now my mind is alert and aware. My mind is saying, you know, after the session, I will do this, drop this. It is not going to bring happiness. That is what is extraordinary awareness. It is here with you. We don't realize it. So when we don't realize it, then we have a problem. So we'll come back to the main, with that understanding, Eastern wisdom promises freedom to a qualified seeker. It results into self-fulfillment, not a desire fulfillment. Remember, desire moves my mind outside. So I, when I become aware, that my mind is moving outside because of the desire, and every desire has to take me to the delusion. So the delusion drops. But again, the problem comes, I have yet to understand. Then our master says, understand through the metaphor. And I told you, I've already explained about the metaphor. So metaphor is just a symbol, an image, a comparison, a simile to understand the reality. Even Maya, we, when we talk of the Maya, Maya is also a model. It has nothing to do with any. Once you understand that Maya, everything is Maya, illusion outside, your mind lives into that awareness. It is simply a Maya. Now come to the metaphors. So what we understood, uh, that in a metaphor, we have four layers, four stages of the manifestation of this entire universe from one pure consciousness. The way there is a, in a, you know, you have a canvas. Canvas is nothing but a pure cloth, white cloth. So first layer, the innermost layer is pure cloth. Then it is starched, second layer. Third layer, it is the subtle body. Fourth layer, it is the manifestation. You get the white cloth and you get the canvas. It is high, stretched by putting the wooden blocks all around. So it is a casual stage that we do not know now, and we are going to discover that. The entire journey uh, based on this metaphor. Again, I'm repeating, first is the white cloth, then it is starched, and then you, had, you sketch it. That sketching is con conception. And after the conception, you fill the colors, you fill the colors and the painter is painted. Right? So how to relate this to our entire existence? The innermost layer is the white cloth that we do not see.
Do you see that white cloth we do not see in a painting? It is always clean. It is one. So we compare that it is a pure consciousness that is pervading everywhere. No, no, you make me understand little more. Water is same, waves are different. Hmm? Gold is one, but jewelries are different. Ah, we have earring, we have nose pin, we have necklace, we have a uh, bracelet. But I'm not able to see the gold. You do not go to the shop and you say, give me some gold. In transactional reality, we have to say, you know, show me the ring. I have a Jesus gold stretch you. And you go to the shop and you say, I love this, you know, but I'm in difficulty. I want to sell it. Because I love it. It's an image that I adore. So what is the price? So Goldsmith says, I will wait and then I will tell you the price. It is not based on the image. Are you getting it? It is not based on the image. What is the essence? I will give you the price. You may have a lot of emotional dependence. That doesn't work here. Are you getting it? The first one, the pure consciousness. Huh? That is the first level. And out of that pure consciousness, there is a causal stage. So the causal stage is compared with the starched so that we can conceive. So that is known as the causal stage. We will talk about this causal state. From the causal stage, you know, then the sketching. The sketching starts. <clears throat> Part maker. Part maker conceives in the mind. That is the third stage. And after conception, then we paint. So we all are the painting. We all are different paintings on one canvas. And behind that canvas, there is only one consciousness. To know that one consciousness, to be aware, to live into that, to think and speak and act out of that, is what is mindfulness 24 by 7. Even when there is one space, mind forces us to be aware of our house, our highways, our workplace. Even if there is one space, we know it, we lose that awareness, and when we why we lose that awareness, I have already explained by an example of a crocodile. No, no, it's a log of wood. I have I have to save myself. I will find the security in the money. One crocodile. I will find the security if I get married. No, I'm, I'm not saying that you don't get married. <coughs> get married, have dozen of kids. So that's not a problem. Understanding that mind must remove all those delusions, the wrong notions, the wrong concepts, and then so gold converted into a ring necklace, the water appears to be converted into the different wave forms. The space is converted into different houses. Same consciousness appears as different people, but it is only one consciousness.
to know that, to be into that state is nothing but the mindfulness. Let us understand in a little challenging way. Master says we do not take birth in death. We are pure consciousness. It is a manifestation caused by the causal body and the subtle body. They are simply the manifestations. They are the simply Ah, the ring or necklace or bracelet, but actually it is the gold. It appears different. We appear different because of the name and the form. No, no. How can you say, you know, I have my parents, really? Yeah, we are going to talk about this. My parents gave me the birth. We are understanding that, that metaphor. So if uh, the matter is not present in the universe, can our parents give birth to us? Let me put it in a different way. If clay is not there, can pot maker make the clay? Simple. No. So it means my birth, we normally say, you know, my parents are good and bad. It has nothing to do with good and bad. Clear your mind. So first thing, material cause has to be there. Material cause, the body has to be there. No parents have created the body. Are you aware? Just become aware. So I'm bringing in another concept for contemplation. So material cause is one. Clay is one. I'm comparing. Clay is one. Then what happens? Then the instrumental cause are my parents. Have you seen that the tigers give birth to a uh, cub of cow? So there has to be some intelligence. Are you clear? There has to be some intelligence. And that intelligence is consciousness. That we are not aware. Once we are aware, we are already there. So there are three causes. The instrumental cause. Instrumental cause. I as a father, my honey as a mother gave birth to two kids. It's a simple statement, but there is an instrumental cause. I am the instrumental cause. Material cause is the body already available. And then what is? Efficient cause. Efficient cause. Main cause is there. And then main cause is hidden in the causal body. Did you get it? There is no starch cloth. You cannot have a conception. Are you clear? So we are going, we are going to the ultimate cause. But that second layer of what we see, the starch or the casual, causal, is manifesting on the pure consciousness. Oh, there's, there's going to be a big tide. How do I know it? I see some movement in the water. Let us go far away, causal stage. That appears as a sketching. This is what we have to understand. So this master goes on talking about it. <clears throat> and it says, you need not to do any practice. You have to simply understand, live into that extraordinary awareness, go to the ultimate cause. You will discover that 
every the water is becoming a wave the water is becoming a storm the water is becoming a tsunami there is nothing but only the water that is oneness knowledge real self is there real self is pure consciousness how it happens that we are going to understand how it happens Let science work in the material world. We do not oppose it, we accept it. But we reject what we are saying that, who am I? I'm not Tesla. Now you see that we, we make a statement that Tesla and Elon Musk are synonyms. But we normally talk in that sense. So when you drop identification through your awareness with anything and everything in the material world, the material cause is gone. <clears throat> then the instrumental cause is also gone. What remains is the efficient cause and that efficient cause is nothing but pure consciousness. Whether you say pure consciousness, whether you say real self, <clears throat> it is, both are the same. So this journey is moving from, moving away from the world outside, the world of name in the form. So, it's a reverse process, you know, we say recycling, you know, something like this. So reverse process means I become aware of the world of name and the form, and then I go to the cause of this world in the form. That is my subtle body, which is the mind. Mind should be clear from the delusion. So when I, so what Buddha says, Emptiness. And from that emptiness, we go to the pure consciousness. After all, that emptiness depends on something. Consciousness. And consciousness depends on nothing. So we have found the ultimate cause. It is pure consciousness. And it is what we are looking for through this metaphor in a weekly journey. Let us go for it, eyes are closed. Are you aware it is the fourth stage of manifestation? And it is the third stage inside. You heard it from me. The mind heard it. Mind says, okay. Mind has a total control over the fourth stage. We don't realize it. We get carried away. And that's where the delusion comes. I believe you all are getting into it. So when I say eyes are closed, let me be settled completely at the fourth level. If I say fourth level, means at the level of the body. So who says it? Mind. From where this concept came? From the causal state that I don't know now. I will discover that. Do you see? And from where this causal stays? from the pure consciousness. After all, consciousness is all intelligent. I don't say create 40 trillion cells in the body so that I will continue to live. 
from where it has come. Subtle body, no role. Something deeper. I gave an example of the efficient call, the in. I have to live with that knowledge, simple. So when I live with that knowledge, no delusion at all. Do you understand how <clears throat> I evolved this concept of being comfortable? Let us go back and see. I, in the beginning, very beginning, I said, look at the neck joint. Feel and be aware. Experience, sensation, comfort, and steadiness. So the mind creates a delusion as if the comfort comes from doing something. If the comfort is not there inside, it will never come to us. We forget this point. You forget. Why? Because of delusion. Why? Mind is running outside. Otherwise, how this habitual mind can dare to move your body? Now, did you understand extraordinary awareness? We have to do nothing to live into that extraordinary awareness. It is all the knowledge, whether it's you say knowledge, awareness, experience. We are settled in the comfort because that very comfort comes from that consciousness, not from the three levels of manifestation. But if the mind gets attached by taking melatonin or serotonin, I will be happy that doesn't work here. Example. No, you are listening to me, means knowledge is knowledge settles in the mind clearly. You live into that awareness. So there comes being carefree. Pay attention. Being carefree. I do not say become carefree. Become means doing. Being carefree means. I'm aware. <clears throat> aware of what? Carefree. Carefree means what? I am free from all the cares of the mind. How the mind cares me with reference to the material world, the fourth stage. What does it mean? I'm already into the delusion. How to know that? My mind is still jumping, wondering. What should I do? I should do nothing. I'm only aware that it is the fourth stage and I'm separate from all these thoughts that enters into the mind or leaving it. I have to do nothing. I know you understand you all are seekers. You are living into that state of awareness. Doer cannot separate itself from the body and the mind. Knower is already separate. I have to simply recognize. Don't I recognize that you all are separate and I'm giving a lesson? Knower. But if you ask, okay, let me know how to how to separate myself from you. No, no, I know I'm already separate. So when you are aware that you are already separate and different from all the thoughts, they enter into the mind, they leave the mind, they stay there. 
whatever the thought is doing. I'm just separate. Finish. Result. Result is here carefree. We are living in that extraordinary awareness. Any thought that comes. No, I'm feeling unease and discomfort. That is also a thought. I feel good. That is also a thought. No, no, I have to do some work. That is also a thought. The moment you separate, mind dares not to fall into delusion. It is as simple as that, that you are standing across the road watching the traffic. You don't enter in the middle of the highway towards the traffic. For that, what we need? We need an awareness. I'm angry. Become an oar. Be an oar. You see, anger is separate from you. I'm upset. Upset is separate from you. Only the knower knows this. The doer cannot do it. Feeler cannot do it. Why? You see, we, we follow everything logically. Why? Feeler and the doer creates a false eye in the mind. The false eye has to exist that I have to do something to achieve. I have to be a doer, I have to be a feeler, I have to be an experiencer. I'm an experiences. You have this thought separated. So when I say separate, you know they are separate, they are different. Slowly we are bringing this metaphor into our journey of mindfulness 24 by 7. I may deviate, but I will return to the same metaphor. No issue. You can say I'm aware, I'm a knower. My body is relaxed and calm and steady, that's okay. I'm aware, I'm not. I see the thoughts are minimized in the mind, that is okay, I'm a not. The moment the mind becomes a doer, you have lost that awareness. Oh, uh, something deep inside makes me discomfort. So you have known this discomfort through the mind as a thought or as a feeling. You are a witness. You are a knower. You do nothing to that discomfort. Why you are separate? See how the metaphor works. The 
only the space, infinite space, emptiness and nothingness is there. In that nothingness, something happens, we have yet to know. Second layer, manifestation into the third layer, it happens to the mind, either in the form of a thought or a feeling or an idea or a past memory. Ah, it has a cause. Okay, I have yet to know, but now I know what is happening in the mind. It has a cause inside. So I have not to worry. So why I feel and experience because of the fourth stage, and that is the body, five sense organs, five motor organs, the energy. Oh, this is all a matter. I'm only saying awareness, knowledge, and experience. Body is nothing but the matter. Fourth stage. No, no, I can move my hand, so... The body is conscious. So here again we have... We are in knower. What is the knower? Body is a matter. We supply the matter in terms of the food from outside that sustains, that maintains the matter. No, no, but body is conscious. Matter is not. This is a delusion master sees. Listening and knowing. Consciousness is superimposed on the body. That is why we feel the body is conscious. Do you know the protein, carbohydrate, fat are conscious entities outside? We take food supplement. Are they conscious? No. They are dead matter. They do not know themselves, they do not know others. One definition of matter. Does the right hand know the left hand? No. Does the body know that we have two eyes? No. Can the body become conscious of itself? No. But why I feel it? Because of superimposition. Or you can say the body takes some properties of the consciousness, and consciousness takes some properties of the body. How? Like in an iron ball, you put it into the fire, red hot iron ball. Iron is never hot. But it appears. So the body appears as if a conscious entity. We are going into the fourth stage of the metaphor. We are looking closely. We are a knower, we are not a doer. 
No, no, what about the feeling and the sensation? Red height, iron ball. Iron ball is never hot. Now comes the magic. What is the magic? Iron ball is hot and red. You leave it away from the fire. What happens? Iron ball goes into its natural state. Body goes into its natural state of matter. What is the natural state of the matter or the body here? That you enjoy the experience of being comfortable, carefree. Matter does not know, but you know. When we live into that awareness, we experience and sometimes the tingling and the numbness and the body freezes down, let it be so. We're not doing anything. We are a knower. We are not a doer. Water is solid, is, is delusion. Water is a vapor, it's a delusion. Leave the water. Liquid. Leave the fourth stage as it is, just be a knower. It's nothing but the matter. The matter does not know itself. Matter is inert, non living substance. The body is a non living substance. So why we are worried about the birth and the growth and the death? Long list. Goal is to explore who we are. Fourth stage is all about matter. <clears throat> Third stage is about the subtle body, the mind, or the intellect, or the doer, or the feeler. I'm using the feeler as we enjoy the pain and the pleasure. All experiences takes place in the mind, pertaining to the body. We lose that awareness. Then I say I have a headache. You're only a knower. So after all, the mind is also a matter because in deep sleep we don't know anything. What the science says, total unconsciousness. <clears throat> so mind can become unconscious, means mind is a matter.
because of the delusion, a constant chattering of the mind pertaining to the fourth stage, that is the material world, <coughs> we lose awareness where the painting has been done. It is done on the white cloth. We don't see it. But it is already there. We don't see the consciousness. We see, you know, I have a body, I have a subtle body, the mind. I have to do something to be happy. But happiness is coming from inside. Peace is inside. Pay attention. Mind superimposes a sense of insecurity, unhappiness in itself. Now ask yourself why? That sense of insecurity inside the mind, because I'm searching security, outside in a person, in a wealth, in the material world, which is not there. But mind says it is there. So the insecurity continues in the mind. And I keep running in the world outside. Everyone is running. From Bill Gates to Elon Musk, from Biden to others, from me to my honey, find out. Just become aware. You are a knower only. Knower means awareness. No means knowledge. <clears throat> Where? When? Here and now. That mind who lives in higher awareness explores all the four stages the fourth stage we see the different people events, non-living things. We are aware. Nothing to hide and suppress it. Second stage is the subtle stage. A sketching of tiger has to be done to manifest the tiger. Sketching of me has to be done to manifest my body, name, shape. See that second stage. But uh, this conception has to come from somewhere. Third stage. Uh, so the last three stages are simply play and fun? Yes. The ultimate is pure consciousness. Knower is consciousness. Knowledge is consciousness. Consciousness is awareness. Rest or manifestation.
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the hands, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms, know your experiences, bring the hands down. We'll share our experiences. How are you, Stephen? Uh, good, thank you. Um, uh, I always enjoy the lessons. Um, I always enjoy the, uh, the contemplation and reflection in the lessons on Saturday. Um, I, I found myself uh, absorbed in, in that whole thing during the lesson um, and then leading into the meditation. It was the same way. What I found, I, I was, I, I, there was no thoughts anywhere else but in what was taking place. Um, what I found was interesting is, is that while you were speaking, my, my body temperature just continued to drop that I thought I was actually shivering at some point. Um, yeah which I found to be um, bizarre. Um, but when you went to that last part, I don't know how long it was, but when you went silent at the very end of the meditation, I was just completely absorbed in meditation with no thought. Beautiful. So, thank you. Beautiful. Always remember, that's why I pointed out that you may experience freezing, tingling, shivering, all these and then the mind creates another delusion. I did nothing. Why it is happening? No, calm down. 
just be a knower. Just be a knower. Beautiful. How are you, David and Jerry? Um, yeah, similarly, I, I really enjoy the the uh, Saturday lessons and the practice for non-practice. Uh, for me, it was just very, um, it was just a, a wonderful journey. It was very smooth. Um, I'm realizing that this doer needs is becoming a non-doer, no pun intended. No. Um, but no, it was very, very uh, peaceful. And and when the silent moment, I was just so deep inside me. I just it was like bliss. So right. that's a beautiful way to explain. You see that what happens? We are we are moving into that direction. When it's non-practice, so the mind realizes that we are never a doer. So what happens then? We are not a doer. In personal, professional, social life, all activities become a play and a fun. You're not a doer. You're not a feeler. <laughs> That, you know, that is what is one way to say uh, awakening. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good. Thank you. Um, I was very deep in that meditation. I um, heard you, but not, I I don't know. I The mind was not talking to me at all. Very, very deep. And I love, I love the play and the fun. I'm totally attached to I, we are the pure consciousness that's never changing. And then everything else is constantly changing. So everything, the, yeah. everything else, the mind, the, our goals, our beliefs, all those things constantly changing. And we're not attached to it. So play and the fun. I love that you say it's play and the fun. Yeah. Everything you know, life becomes a play. Even if you have a pain, it's also a play. It's not only the, only the pleasure. You know, when the mind picks up the pleasure, oh, it's a play and a fun, but not the pain. But the pain takes place in the last three stages, not in the consciousness. It's a beautiful uh, description. Good. How are you? Sam and uh, who is sitting near you? Ankit. Ankit. Hi. Hi. Yes. Um, my experience was very quiet, deep, and refreshing. Refreshing. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, it's a refreshing means that I have lost attachment or the delusion with the last three stages. So I'm settled into that consciousness. That's how I realized. I will uh, go to Terry. But before that, how are you, Ankit? I'm you good. Came here, you came here to listen and practice or? Yes. Yeah. Listen and practice. OK. Sam invited me nicely. So what happened? Um, it was good. It was very nice. I liked your description of how, why does it feel like consciousness is from the body? It's because it's imposed onto the body. Yeah, I don't believe uh, others are sharing their experiences. They may be crazy. You tell your experiences on you. Mm -hmm. What was my experience asking? Yeah. Uh, I liked that little bit of light. I may have fallen a little asleep, but I, uh, you know, the Shanti Shanti Om was a nice way to come back. Ah, very good. Very good, Ankit. It's your first session. I will not say anything. You have to figure out how are you, Brandy? Oh, yeah, Terry, you see that, you know? Oh, she... That's okay. I, I had a, my thoughts were on the concepts that were being discussed. Okay. But I can't remember my questions. I didn't that's very good. Hold on to them. 
separate yourself from the question. Yeah. I had questions as I was thinking about the the ideas and uh, I I don't have them anymore. It's okay. You know, you have such a severe problem and you maintain the body was totally quiet, more or less quiet. I could see that. I was fighting the dystonia. So a lot some of my effort is just is distracted into that getting the body to is is, is some of it my effort is put into distancing myself from the uh distracting yeah. unpleasant things yeah. and yeah. Then it frees me to think about the ideas and sometimes i get far enough where i get a little bit of experience of nothingness but a lot of times i'm not that lucky to get that far but I, this weekend i've been thinking a lot about the ideas Come on, Terry. Everyone is noticing your speech. Really? Which is practically normal oh, as compared to other sessions that you do not notice because your mind is obsessed with your problem. I, I, when I listen back to the recordings, then I do hear that. Oh, I Don't you I see that? that? You know, her normal speech as compared to other sessions? today yeah wow okay that's good everything is good my friend how are you brandy where is your smile <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh, um i well you know i don't have a condition like terry's i did come in with a lot of physical discomfort um like in my neck and in my face and once we started the meditation and I settled into it, you know, amazingly, but not that amazingly, I was completely removed from the physical discomfort and my mind was still running a little and I had, you know, a nice uh, deep practice and my, my mind's tricky, right? It knew what to throw at me um, to kind of jerk me back. And then all of a sudden I was aware of the physical discomfort, but quite less, like I, I was in the time that I spent detached from it, I was able, my body was able to settle down a little bit, maybe like Terry, right? Where um, it's it's noticeable, but it's less invasive and I'm coming from a calmer place. Beautiful, yes. Yeah, you see that discomfort also settles. I think I talked about that, but I'm uh, throwing a sentence when the mind enters into the body unorganized subconsciously habitually and instinctively result is discomfort result is cancer i'm going to the extreme so think of it result is illnesses so sometime you might we might have realized that I don't want to be angry, but still I became angry. It is because of the body. The body has been totally taken over by the unconscious and mind. This sentence I made it for Terry. You have to think. Instead of anger, replace the illness. How are you ever? Uh, sir, I'm good. Uh, my experience was, was like that. It was continuous, but it was independent. Like it, my, like it's like that. The present thought is not dependent on the previous one. So everything is independent, and it was Beautiful. peaceful. Beautiful. How are you, Ashok, sir? Sir, namaste. Sir, namaste. <laughs> I'm good and fine, peaceful, quite relaxed. Quite and wonderful so any question terry has already forgotten all the questions so i have not to answer so. <laughs> ankit you have any question no no questions from me 
we have to lure the newcomers, you know. So that's why, you know. So. <laughs> no, you don't have any question? Very good. So that's good. And after all, it's uh, Sam friend. So everyone is close to me, but. Uh, Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is all for today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You see, me, Terry is also doing Namaste. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> I see. That is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet again.